Hi and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. In this video, we're going to examine the deconstruct and design process used in both psychology and biology. We will break down each of these components and the processes involved, illustrated with some exemplars. This process starts with the deconstruction of a problem, which in turn leads to the design of a method. This design includes a hypothesis, identification of variables and justification of the chosen method. The method justification is a critical component of deconstruct and design and can be included in both or either of these sections. Let's start by examining a deconstruction in more detail. Deconstruction involves investigating a question or problem for which the outcome is uncertain. A number of components within this need to be considered, including possible factors that might affect the investigation. Within the deconstruction, factors that may need to be controlled and those that are unable to be controlled need to be distinguished. Deconstruction also includes the determination of an appropriate method to measure changes in these variables, as well as the selection of an independent variable, reasons for this choice and justification for various steps in your procedure. So now that we know what a deconstruction includes, what is the best approach to complete this process? The first step is to identify what the problem is. Then you need to specify and simplify the problem by brainstorming. Break down the problem into its smaller parts, such as factors affecting the investigation. The third step is to prioritise each component. Examine how each one is related to the problem. Which component is likely to enable a solution to be found and can it be investigated? Once you have chosen and justified your prioritised components, suggest how it could be investigated. Consider any potential solutions that may be found. Let's deconstruct a simple problem as an example. How do you know if hand soap is effective? First of all, let's brainstorm some of the factors that may influence the effectiveness of hand soap that are able to be controlled. The type and brand of soap would be an important factor to control as different soaps will vary in their composition. Will the soap be a liquid, bar or foaming soap and will it be antibacterial? The volume of soap, water temperature, duration of washing and the hand washing technique used are all factors that could influence effectiveness. Next we need to consider factors that may influence the effectiveness of hand soap that are unable to be controlled. For example, if a bar of soap is chosen, how can you control the volume or amount used? The concentration of active ingredient may also vary, as well as how contaminated each individual's hands are prior to washing. This leads to the question of, well, what does effectiveness of hand soap actually mean? How can effectiveness be investigated and measured? One way could be to measure bacterial growth on an agar plate. If hand washing is effective, the presence of microorganisms like bacteria and fungi should be less. To investigate this, we need to know what bacteria are commonly found on hands. We also need to know the incubation period of these bacteria in order to determine and justify our chosen method. Another consideration about the testing environment relates to how the sample will be collected. A hand swab could be taken before washing to provide a baseline for comparison, as well as afterwards. However, what part or parts of the hand are being swabbed and how many samples are being taken each time. The deconstruction can be presented in a variety of formats, including a table, flowchart, mind map or ideas tree. Regardless of the chosen format, it is limited to one single-sided A4 page. Let's look at some examples of these different formats. Here's an example of a deconstruct in a flowchart format. You can see that each aspect of the deconstruct is contained within its own box under a relevant subheading. The flow of ideas from one aspect to the next is connected using arrows. The final box, which is located at the bottom right and is the most shaded, contains the student's choice of independent variable and justified method. Here is a slightly different, more tabular format. This student has chosen to colour code their deconstruct based on which part of the problem is being examined in that box. Their specific choices have been highlighted in green and the grey box contains their justified method. Here is a mind map example of a deconstruct. Although it is a different layout, the information being presented is essentially the same. 
This student has also used colour coding very effectively. This is another mind map deconstruct that contains very detailed and specific justification of their chosen method. As shown in these two examples taken from the mind map, the student is clearly identifying their chosen procedure. Furthermore, they are identifying an advantage and disadvantage of their method. So that's how to complete and present a deconstruction. Now let's look at the design component. Remember, you've chosen your independent variable in the deconstruction. You've also already researched different ways to investigate it and considered the potential outcomes. The design is where you formalise and refine this, ready to carry out the investigation. Therefore, the first parts of the design are to state the aim of the investigation, write a hypothesis and identify the independent and dependent variables. Summarise the factors that can be controlled, why they need to be controlled and how, as well as uncontrollable factors. This should include an explanation of how they may affect the results. The next step is to list all materials and equipment that will be required and summarise the methods suitable to test the hypothesis. Again, include justifications here. Include a blank results table and even graph demonstrating how the results will be recorded and represented. You may also choose to include a safety assessment as part of your design. Ultimately, throughout the design, you need to be considering what will be observed and measured. Like the deconstruction, there is a page limit, with the design limited to three A4 pages. To finish, here is an example of a method section from a design that contains justification throughout. See how after most steps, the student has included reasons in brackets and italics. It is therefore very clear that the student has carefully considered what will be observed and an appropriate way to measure this, as well as control a range of factors as much as possible. Hopefully this video has helped clarify what a deconstruction and design is and involves, as well as some ideas of how to present this in your own investigations. Thanks for watching and good luck.